Welcome back, faithful viewers and listeners, to the last part of the Path to Carcosa player card review on AV Club. Carcosa. Uh, we're doing neutral player cards this time around, and you'll be very surprised to see... <laughs> cards. Car- <plural>. Card. <laughs> uh, there's Lola, and that's it. Although she does have six cards to her name, or five cards, I guess. To her name, so yeah. Sean, would you like to describe the perfect woman in your own words? L O L A L O L A. She's so three. Lola Hayes. <laughs> She's threes across the board. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and she doesn't have any of the charm of Jenny to make up for it. But all right, so Lola Hayes is our neutral investigator. She is the actress. She has three everything. Uh, she's a performer. Forced, after you draw your opening hand, choose a role. So you name one of the classes or neutrals. You can only play, commit, or trigger abilities on neutral cards or cards of your role. And then as a fast action, limit once per round, you may switch your role. Then her Elder Sign effect is plus two. Again, you may switch your role. It's almost like that's a really important part of how she operates. Hmm. And then she has uh, six health and six sanity. Her deck is a little odd. It's 35 cards. She can take Survivor, Guardian, Seeker, Rogue, and Mystic cards, level 0 to 3, and Neutral cards, 0 to 5. Uh, and her requirements are two copies of Improvisation, two copies of Crisis of Identity, and one random basic weakness. And she has one additional requirement. This is the first for, for any investigator, at least, I think. Uh, no, wait. Uh, no, Marie Rex. had something... Rex, thank you. Yep. All right. So anyway, additional requirement is that your deck must include at least seven cards from each of three different classes. So you can't you can't just go hard on one class and cherry pick a couple key cards from other classes. You got to kind of commit at least halfway to three. Thank God this is not a competitive game because yeah. tournament organizers everywhere would just be screaming for deck checks. Um, yes. So God, I wouldn't want to do that deck check. Oh, that makes my brain hurt just thinking about it. Uh, while we're on kind of on the topic of basic weakness, uh, Stubborn Detective is actually a really good weakness to have with Lola. Um, it sure is. Because it blanks her text so she can just play any card in your hand. Which is just <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, so Lola, I think when she came out um, and was previewed... Uh, Ourselves and the community was completely smitten um, at the opportunities that Lola offered. Uh, The idea behind she can play like 80% of the cards in the game. Um, I know myself, I was like, wow, this is, it's going to take a little long, but eventually someone's going to figure out the niche build. Um, But she kind of floundered after a while. Like she's kind of average. Yeah, and I have my own ideas as to why I think that is. Why do you think that is? I think it's because of the the whole role uh, switching. Um, if she could just play whatever card is in the hand, I think it would be too powerful, quite honestly. Um, but the fact she's limited to certain roles is what really does it for me. Um, her health is a little bit below average, and... She is threes across the board, so she's not great at anything. She's she's good at everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's passable at everything. Let's passable, not, let's not, yeah. Let's passable. not throw out the G word that easily. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, I honestly think that it's more to do with her weakness. Mm. Which we should probably talk about before, before I elaborate. Yes. Uh, crisis of identity. It's a weakness. It's a madness. Revelation. Discard all cards you control of your current role. Ugh. Then discard the top card of your deck. Switch your role to the class of the discard card. If the discarded card is a weakness, switch your role to neutral. I've played so many roles. Madness is to be expected. And I suppose rounding it out, we should just go ahead and read her uh, signature event. Yeah, you want to do that improv- on the fly? Yeah. Uh, on the fly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and improvisation. <laughs> is a zero cost event it has two wild icons that's pretty okay right mm-hmm. it's insight traded which actually matters 
it turns out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now that I'm now that I'm reading this, Lola Hayes deck only fast. Play only during your turn. Switch your role until the end of the turn. Reduce the resource cost of the next card you play of your role by three. Draw one card. And uh, I, I'm not much of, of a fashion critic, but she's killing it in that dress, in that mm -hmm. art, I must say. Yeah. It's kind of like so, a, a leveled up emergency cash. Next card is three cheaper, which is like gain three resources, and you get to draw a card. Which, mm -hmm, considering she has 35 card deck, pretty good. Yes, and, and that, I mean, it essentially makes her deck one fewer card, right? Because mm -hmm. when you play this, it's just going to reduce it. So, so rounding back to what I was saying, mm -hmm. uh, the reason I think she's kind of marginalized in power level is, is it is due to her, her role switching and how much that limits her play turn to turn. But I think it's more to do with the constant threat of crisis of identity and what that does to how you switch your roles. Mm -hmm. And then also what crisis of identity does when it hits you hard. Because there, there are times where you can't do the defensive role switch and you know switch off of your seeker stuff, even though that's most of your board. Mm -hmm. And then this comes out, and you're just riggedy wrecked. Yeah. Um. <sighs> okay. So positives. I think when she came out, and I think it still remains true now that the one of the better builds for Lola is kind of a utility cluver because mm -hmm. she can take. A bunch of different cards, and she has access to, you know, stat boosts. She has access to fast cards that get clues. Basically, she can pull of any investigator. She can pull the most cards that let you grab clues without a test, mm -hmm. which is cool because it also then gets around her weakness that you're going to have to build her intellect up a fair amount to actually do anything with it. Mm -hmm. I think a good thing too about her is that passive skill boosts don't rely on her role. So if you do get a good tableau going, maybe of mixed um, roles or uh, factions, you know she can be quite powerful. Like she could be a like a five four five four something like that, uh, which is insane. Um, that is later on down in the game, um, and it is still susceptible to crisis of identity. But the fact that passive boosts stay around all the time um, is pretty awesome. Yeah, and I think, and I, I don't know if this is the way to play her, because honestly, Lola's probably one of the investigators I've played. I've only, I think I've only actually finished and played two or three builds for her. But the way I generally approached it is I kind of figured, like, okay, so my, oh god, chair, almost broken. Okay, um, so the, the different classes that I ended up taking, kind of, like, I took my rogue cards to deal with enemies, and I took my survivor cards as kind of, well, as you do, risk mitigation. <laughs> Survivor cards. So you did that yes. there. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, and then I took Seeker for clue getting. And like I kind of thought about switching between the roles kind of not just on her based on her ability, but also literally within the game. Okay, now I'm in clue gathering mode. Let's go to Seeker. Mm -hmm. Oh. Enemy spawned. All right, let's hop over to Rogue and evade it. And and it kind of worked out that way more or less. What I mean, do you think that's that's kind of how you roll with this, or do you? I guess my, my ultimate question that I'm leading to very horribly mm -hmm. here is: when you build her deck, mm -hmm. how do you plan for the fact that you can only generally play one role per turn? Um. So I, I think the first thing it, it comes in deck building, and I think when she first came out, and I was looking on uh, Arkham DB with all the decks and stuff. Um, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I threw in like f all five classes. And I think that is just a big mistake right from the beginning. I think you have to limit yourself uh, to four, um, preferably three. And the reason I say four is you always have a role that you can, if you have an extra switch, you can switch to at the end of the, the turn. So if you draw a crisis of identity, there's that one, like, let's say you don't take any guardian cards. You, can, you know you can always switch to guardian and crisis of identity kind of whiffs. Um, you want to specialize in three. Um, it's kind of like the whole minimum deck size versus whatever you want, right? Like a lot of card games have, min like Game of Thrones, um, minimum of 60, but you could go to a million, right? Um, mm -hmm. With what you want to do with her is you want the minimum amount of cards, which is seven of three classes, and then maybe go a little above because obviously it's not the deck size. You're talking about classes at this point. Um, 
you really want to specialize. And when I'm building her and thinking of, okay, I can only play one role per turn, um, I like to have my static boosts in one role uh, that I don't utilize very often. So let's say Survivor. I could play Dark Horse with Pete Sylvester. And then once those are down, I just never play Survivor cards again. Um, and I utilize, let's say, Seeker and Guardian. Uh, and I let those passive boosts just sit there. And so you're, it ends up being you're utilizing two roles at the same time, if that makes sense. It does, it does. And I think that that's definitely a good way to, to go about it, because then you're also, if you kind of plan that, hey, these cards go down and then I switch off for the rest of the game, mm -hmm. you also mitigate the risk of Crisis of Identity hitting those cards later mm -hmm. on. Um, which ultimately, if you're, if you're relying on those cards for just constant stat boost, just to get your stats up to what a normal investigator would have, <laughs> that's a yeah. good thing to do. Yeah, and I definitely think she is more, uh, and we talked about this a lot of times, I think there's more tools for her in clues than there is for combat. Uh, mm -hmm. Combat, I think, is, is kind of difficult for her because you are starting at a three, um, and you'll that's have to... That's an uphill battle. Yeah, you'll have to switch to Guardian to use your weapons, uh, or most of them. Um, if you're using, let's say, a Fire Axe and you have a Vicious Blow, well... You know, you might not be able to use that turn that in the turn if you've already used a rogue card to evade or something, right? Like it's that's yeah, that's the other big thing. And my pick on their lows pointed it out. It's it's the committing thing mm -hmm. that really gets dicey because you you just get so used to it in other investigators where you're like, all right, my hand, here are my option. Add another layer of tactics onto something that should be so simple and be like, okay, here's actually my hand, and I peel two cards out of my eight card hand. Here's what I can actually play with right now. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't feel great a lot of times. So you have to be, I think, when you build her, I think you go neutral skill cards Ooh, yeah. more so than, than anyone else. And yep. in other investigators, those cards tend to get uh, leveled out when I make new purchases. But in Lola, I don't think you can afford to do that. And I think some of those cards get leveled out at level zero with other classes, right? Yeah. Um, but especially in Lola, those neutral skills, one, you can always commit them. Two, they're double pipped. Um, and you can make intelligent choices when building your deck on what pips you need based on if you go on Arkham DB, use the, the pip charts and stuff. Um, but third, it also draws you a card, which in Lola is crucial because her deck size is quite bigger than a lot of other uh, investigators. And if you're drawing the wrong cards, it's hard to get a move on. You know what I mean? Like if you really need a weapon and all you draw is your seeker cards... That sucks. Uh -huh. So having those neutral skills that that let you churn through your deck, it's actually quite key. Um, I find when I when I used to play with her a bunch, I'd be close to fifteen neutral cards ish. I mean, not just skills. And if, but... if you're already taking twenty one of your other three classes, leave you a whole lot of room for tech cards. Yeah. So. Well. So where would you say Lola sits at uh, right now? We are uh, just had the City of Archives in the Forgotten Age mm -hmm. release. Where do you think Lola sits as far as like power level and general usability goes? I think Is she's she at the bottom. I don't know if she's at the bottom. I really have to go like <laughs> I think one of these days I have to actually make a tier list for myself and, and <laughs> go through what I think because uh, in my head. It's all kind of mumbo jumbled. I think she's near the bottom, though. I think she, because she doesn't specialize in anything, and generalization is actually quite difficult with her because of the switching the role thing. Um, mm -hmm. I think deck building for her is very complicated, uh, and you can make some critical mistakes there. And then playing her, you can be at the whim of your deck, as well as make a lot of bad choices easily. Um, so, yeah, I think she's near the bottom. And I, I used to think, you know, someone's going to come along and be like, hey, I played 120 games. Here's the premium Lola deck. No one has, and I don't think there is a premium Lola deck there. I just think that requires uh, an amount of patience <laughs> that not many people have. I think 
And I'd probably want to test this. I've been I've been falling back in love with standalone mode since since Gen Con and getting prepared for that. I think there might be some redeem it, uh, redemption rather in Lola in standalone because you can mm. kind of then at least kind of cherry pick what you're looking for. Because one yeah. of the tricky parts of Lola is that level zero build Oof. is rough. Yep. And and you need experience and a decent amount of it to really get her, you know, operating the way you want her to. Mm-hmm. And when your level zero build is rough, that's tough to get the experience of blah, blah, blah. Standalone might be where she's best. Yeah. And, you know, like you start off with nine experience in standalone. If you're willing to take one extra weakness, which in the grand scheme of things deck. in her deck is not that it's it's less impactful. Um 19 experience you can build a pretty good lola deck so so for those of you out there screaming at your screens or headphones that know lola's the best you guys just don't know i'd love to see some cool lola builds <laughs> yeah that's that's one of my favorite things to go out to arkham db and check out is is a lola build with a good deck description that actually talks through it you know and we we mentioned this on our last actual podcast episode um, I said, you know, like at the end of the next cycle. So currently, we're in the the Forgotten Age cycle. At the end of the next cycle, we're gonna have we're gonna hit that that point in player cards with it. I think there's gonna be a lot of niche options. Um, mm-hmm. That might be a time to revisit Lola, uh, especially even later on in the game. I guarantee someone's gonna break something with Lola, and it may not be significant. It might just end up being an errata on a certain card because someone makes an infinite loop that does next to nothing. Um, but she also has that chance of breaking something just because she can take level to three, level zero to three, everything. There's gonna, right. There's like gonna if, be there, if there's some really loopy god tier combo, Lola's probably who it's going to be played out of. Like, yeah. what's her? What's her big? What's what's the money one right now that you really want? It's will to survive plus ace in the hole. Yeah. Plus police badge. <laughs> yeah. There's. Yeah. There's a big money one, and I forget what it's called, but it's something like 18 resources. It's yeah. ridiculous. Gaining 18 resources. Um, no. Maybe. One day. We'll see. I hope. She's very interesting. I love, I love the thought of the design, but it, at the end of the day, it just kind of felt like she was balanced one step too far to be powerful. Mm-hmm. I think... I would love... I, I have no idea if there's any plans for this, because the novellas are at least the first series are kind of done, but I would love to see a replacement set for Lola and see kind of what we could do out of the shadow of crisis of identity. Mm-hmm. Cause it's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, I'm pretty neutral on her. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Tell my wife, I said, hello, Sean, out of all the neutral cards, uh, you got a favorite here. I'm going to go with Lola. Hello. Lola. Actually, I'd probably choose improvisation. I mean, even yes. even in a in even in another investigator's deck, fast, cheapen the next card by three and draw a card. Mm-hmm. That'd be pretty sweet. Yes, it would. All right. Well, thank you, Sean, for joining me for these last six episodes <laughs> with a with a break in between three and four. There was a bit of a pause, but you know what? We're we, we're getting it out there. It's yeah. we're going from giving it a warrior's death to I don't know full revitalization. Hopefully, I'm not Get dead out. yet. <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> Let's go for a walk. <laughs> I think All I'll right. go for a walk. <laughs> um, thank you, listeners and viewers, for joining us. Uh, I'm not sure when the next time we'll have another AV club, but it will be soon. Because, like Sean said, it's not dead yet. Or I said that. (laughs) Anyways, have an excellent day. Bye.